Welcome to Electra Online and now we're going to get into the chapter where we're going to learn about observing the night sky. The first experience that most people have when they study astronomy, at least not necessarily formally but just experiencing it, is when they go outside at night look up in the sky and they see all the lights in the sky and most of the stars and then they end up seeing the planets and they see the moon. And what they will notice is that things constantly change. You go walk outside at 8 o'clock at night, then you walk outside again at 10 o'clock at night and the same night and things will have changed. You walk outside at different times of the year, things will look very different. The moon is always changing. And where stars are in the long run over the many years will change as well. Things are not constant. They're not constant because the earth and the objects around us are constantly changing over time. Now, as far as the objects around us, especially when we look at the stars and the galaxies and all that, those changes are so slow and take so long that in the typical lifetime, we can consider them to just be stationary. But it turns out that our, our own solar system, the Earth, the Sun, and everything else relative to each other, there's a lot of motion taking place. Matter of fact, the Earth undergoes six different types of motion. Some are on a constant basis, others they change so slow that in the lifetime they're barely noticeable. But they're there and they do affect how we observe the universe and how we observe our solar system. So let's talk about those six motions. Well, I have a globe right here, it'll probably help me explain some of them. The first one everybody is of course familiar with, the Earth rotates on its axis. The Earth will go around its axis every 23 hours and 56 minutes. People say, well, wait a minute, isn't it every 24 hours? No, it turns out it's 23 hours and 56 minutes. The reason why day is 24 hours is because the Earth also rotates or revolves around the Sun. And so in the time that it takes for the Earth to make one rotation on its axis, the Earth will have moved on its orbit one day. And so we'll now have a different position relative to the Sun. And for the same spot on the Earth to be directly across from the Sun again, the Earth has to turn for an additional four minutes in order for the Earth to make one complete rotation relative to the Sun, where one complete rotation relative to the stars that are fixed, it only takes 23 hours and 56 minutes. So the Earth rotates. The Earth, of course, also orbits around the Sun. It takes 365 and a quarter days for the sun to make one for the earth to make one trip around the sun another very interesting motion and it turns out that motion has a lot to do with the climate on the earth the earth also precesses any spinning top that rotates really fast will end up slowly precess without in other words the axis of rotation will constantly make little circles up in the sky like that and the earth is no different since the earth rotates relatively fast for its size what happens is that the direction of point or the axis of rotation of the Earth will slowly precess around. It takes about 26,000 years for the Earth's axis to complete, make one complete rotation like that. So that's precessional motion. What that means is that currently the North Star, which is almost directly above the, the axis of the, Earth, the, the tilt of the Earth, over time will no longer be the polar star because as the Earth continues to precess, different stars will become the polar star. Eventually, about 5,000 years from now, the star Vegas will be our north star. Of course, we won't be around at that time. Some other motions that are maybe a little bit more subtle, one of them is called motion around the barycenter. It turns out that the Earth and the Moon have a very strong gravitational attraction towards one another, and it's always perceived that the Moon revolves around the Earth, but it turns out that both the Moon and the Earth revolve around the center of mass of the Earth. So for example, if the Earth is over here and the Moon is over there, right there, just slightly inside the surface of the Earth, is what we call the barycenter, the center of mass between the Moon and the Earth. So here's the Earth, here's the Moon, and so what happens is instead of the Moon going around the center of the Earth, the Moon goes around the barycenter right here, and the Earth revolves around the barycenter way. So as the Moon goes around the Earth, the Earth goes around the barycenter, and so what happens is, instead of the Earth going around the Sun like that in a nice elliptical path, the Earth will actually go back and forth and back and forth like that. Every time the Moon goes around the Earth, or around the barycenter, more properly said, the Earth will also wiggle back and forth. So the Earth has this kind of weaving motion along the path when it goes around the Sun. The other motion that the Earth has is the change in its ellipticity. Sometimes the Earth has an almost circular orbit, if this is the Sun and this is the Earth. Sometimes the orbit is almost circular, and then other times 
the orbit will be much more elliptical and it goes changes back and forth like that now of course I've exaggerated the change but it's definitely significant matter of fact this change in the earth orbit this motion of the earth is the primary cause of the current ice ages every hundred thousand years or so the the earth plunges into an ice age that happens when the earth has a much more elliptical orbit and when the earth has a much more uh, circle orbit the earth will then come out of his ice age and have kind of a, a nice warm period for about five or ten thousand years and then they're back into an ice age so definitely the motion of the earth in the change in the ellipticity is definitely a big factor in how we live on the earth and finally the tilt most people have learned in school that the earth has a tilt of about 23 and a half degrees relative to the vertical now the tilt well that wait till the next video to see what that tilt really means but the tilt isn't constant, the tilt changes. It turns out that currently it's about 23 and a half degrees, but the tilt can be as much as 24 and a half degrees and as little as about 21 degrees. So the, Earth's, the tilt of the Earth is constantly changing as well. It goes through cycles about 41,000 years. And again, the different tilt will definitely have a significant effect on the climate as well. So, six different motions of the Earth. Now, imagine trying to observe and understand the night sky. Here you are looking at the night sky on an object that's constantly rotating, constantly revolving, constantly precessing, constantly weaving back and forth around the barycenter, constantly changing its elliptical orbit, and finally changing the tilt. All that will have an effect on you and how you observe the universe, because you're not doing it from a steady object that doesn't move relative to the universe, you're doing it from an object that's constantly changing. Not only that, you can be in different locations of the Earth, and because when you're in different locations, you'll have a different perspective of the solar system and the universe around you. So, observing the universe from an object that's constantly moving in so many different ways, and that is a sphere, so you can have a different perspective depending upon where you're on the sphere, can make a huge difference in how you do that, and does complicate things a little bit. So, in the next so many videos, we will learn about observing the universe and the solar system around us, observing the night sky, and learning how to do that, even though the Earth is moving in so many different ways.